Hey guys, it's Meme, and it is time for our advanced supply suggestions. And it, they are just that. They are suggestions. And I gotta be honest, I have looked around my craft room and these videos could go on and on and on. This is gonna have to be where we stop it. And I will probably forget some things, but I'm gonna do my best to show you things that I think once you've gotten your basic basics, you wanna add these to it, okay? And some of you will probably call these basic basics, which I would agree on some of them. Okay. Let's start with our with the with the foundation and that is this guy. Okay. I am using in my video something called a glass mat. Now this one is from glassboardstudios.com. They sent this one to me. I am in love with it. They also gave me a coupon code to give you guys. It is um they don't pay me for my opinion. They did send me this board, but I love it. Now you can see some reflection in it and stuff. So if you want to film with it, be mindful that it does reflect, but for your room, here's what I love about it. Can you guys see like this glue right here? Everything cleans off of it. I'm gonna take some squeaky clean, just like this. I can let, I don't have to let it sit very long. I'm gonna grab my little uh, microfiber cloth. I'm just gonna go at it. Look at that, it's gone. It is so easy to clean up. And here's what I have discovered about my glass board. I am not replacing it. In the past, and again, I film on mine, I would have to replace my board about every about twice a year because it would get so kind of gross in the camera and I didn't like it this one all I'm doing is cleaning it now this is an investment piece but we're talking advanced right I want to show you some other options which we carry in the store and these are just perfectly fine this little board is a smaller board okay it has different measurements you see you got little dots in here so you can line things up in different ways and this one's only a 12 by 18 so it is smaller than mine you don't see my whole board i think mine is 24 let me look 22 by 16 but this one is smaller you see that's enough to film on i want to show you that 12 by 18 is plenty to film on but i like a little bigger board this one though comes in two colors so you see you can have the teal or the gray so i think a good cutting mat and it was actually mentioned in my basic video in the description that i should have told you that and i think they're right you need a good foundation now is it 100 percent necessary all the time it is not but there's a lot of good about it one is it keeps your work surface clean and another is you have all of these rulers that you can use in different ways to your advantage including these angled lines here okay that's where I want to start with that the next thing I want to go to is ink let's talk about ink because I feel like we're coming off the basics you know I mentioned that you would want a good pigment ink and a good dye ink in the color black so you have it for everything okay but outside of that you want to gather up some colored inks as well so these are the ones I recommend for color, but let me explain why. I'm gonna make it easy again, okay? These are my pigment inks, these are my dye inks. So if I need colored dye, I've got it right here. If I need colored pigment, I've got it right here. Now here's the thing about them. These can be a little pricey, but and I think there's 26 to choose from, maybe 24, but they are worth it. I have used the same set for well over a year, probably almost two years without having to replace them. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't have had to replace them, but we used them in a class not too long ago and several of them got damaged. So I did have to replace some, but are you kidding me? Look, these are so incredible. Okay. These, I have videos on them. I want to make sure I tell you this. I have videos showing you how to use all of this. So if you want to see these in more detail, check that out. Now these guys, what I love about them is they're small, they're easy to store, and you really don't need a big old pad, especially when, if you're like me, you don't use a colored ink as often as you color an image, you know? So these work perfect. They come in a very affordable set. There's three different colorways to choose from. And you can get a bunch at one time at a pretty low price. So these are great to have. I realized I pulled all from my purple family. They don't have to be purple. I just pulled a lot of purples in, didn't I? Well, if we're gonna talk purple, let's look at this guy. <laughs> so, this is my Gemini Junior. Now, does everybody need a Gemini Junior? No, but I'm gonna tell you something. In the industry right now, this is about as affordable as a crank version of this. So really, if you can get one, get this one. I like this one. Let me tell you what this is. This is an embossing machine. You guys have seen me use embossing folders before. That's what this is here. This embosses paper and leaves that pretty pattern on your paper. And this is how you do it. Now, this is one version. This guy comes with like six plates, some dies. It comes with all kinds of stuff in its, in its set. We have this available in the store. I will link it below for you guys. But this one, 
is power. That's what's different about this. And I'm gonna turn it sideways so you can see what I'm talking about. This one, when you feed the plate in this side, it does it automatically pulls it through for you. So you're not having to crank it like this. This looks bulky, doesn't it? It's really not. I have it sitting to the side, to my left-hand side. It is always plugged up. I can always access it. I don't have to bring it into the camera or anything like that. I can just run my um, items through. It not only does embossing, it also does die cutting. So when you see us use our dies, this does that as well. This is something you'll want to invest in pretty early on. I think this is something you'll need for your scrapbooking and paper crafting. So go ahead and find one of these that you like. Again, there's a full video, full tutorial showing you how to use this guy and we'll link it below. Let's talk scissors. Scissors are very important for paper crafting. Just like any craft, scissors are super important. I want you to think about fabric scissors, okay? Do you remember like your grandma probably had a pair that you weren't allowed to touch? They were her fabric scissors. Well, it's kind of the same with us, okay? I showed you in the first video cutter bees. These are cutter bees. These are the ones that no one needs to touch, okay? These are your paper fussy cutting scissors. We want them to stay sharp. We want them to stay gunk free. I don't want them used on anything but fussy cutting, okay? But these guys are more the ones that do the everyday work, okay? What I love about the Tim Holtz ones is they are just... I'm gonna say indestructible. I know they're not allowed to say that, but I these things are amazing. The blades are, um, let me read all the information so I don't say anything wrong to you. They are resistant to rust and corrosion. They are high durability titanium coated blades. And they, these have a micro serrated edge for controlled cutting. I have used this one, this one, and this one for so long. These have been in my stash forever. Before these, I'm going to talk about these, but these guys are amazing. This one, I feel, I got to be honest, if you can only put one in your stash to start with, do this one. Do you see how long this um, blade is? What I love about this one is you can cut up the side of a card if you need to cut something off so super easy, and you'll be surprised how good these super long blades um, how well they come in. Like you'll use them for everything. You'll be surprised. So a good pair of scissors. All right. And you're thinking why three sizes? They all do something else. I pick them all up for something different, but that's another video. All right. So let me move these aside. Let's talk about the tonic. Now these guys here, I should say the pro cuts. I was on the fence about these when we first found them. I was like, do we really need another scissor? Is it, is it really that much different? Yes, it is really that much different. We use these for ribbon. We use these for, um, if we're doing something kind of really precision, you know what I'm saying? These are super sharp and they are super gorgeous uh, cutting utensils. I just love them. I've actually taken this, this, I have this pair, I didn't take this pair because you're looking at it, but I have this pair and I've made it my fabric scissors at home and I'm not sad about it. I looked at some really expensive fa fabric scissors, but I was like, I just don't believe they can cut better than these, so I took these home to my sewing room. Now, we use these as a utilitarian pair. Could you fussy cut with these? You could. I feel the blade is a little long for that, but they're really good for your everyday basic scissors to have in your craft room. Now, what do you, you're like, what's different about these two? They are the same, except this is a right-handed pair and this is a left-handed pair, so pay attention to that when you're ordering because it does make a difference. And all of my left-hand subscribers and crafters have said these are amazing, so these are a great one to add to your stash as well. Now let's talk rulers. Did you know that there was this many rulers? And this is not even nearly all of them, but let me show you this collection that I use all the time. So you know I use my Tim Holtz ruler constantly. This guy, I should just put a string on here and wear around my neck. I need a Tim Holtz ruler with me all the time. I love it. And you guys know I have videos on how to use all of these tools already. So we'll make sure to link a playlist of all of that for you. This one, this is the one that comes in this box here. Once you see this, this is called the Easy Grip Ruler. Now I like this ruler when I need to do something like cutting with a blade, okay? This is the blade I love. I, well, I waited a long time to get this blade, but I really like it because I was nervous of it. It's very dirty right now. But what this blade does, it's a finger blade and it sits on your knuckle like that. You hold it like this so you can get a really natural um, hold of it, okay? And what I love about this ruler and this blade, two things. One, this is metal, so I'm not gonna cut into my plastic. Yep, 
you can cut into the plastic. And to be honest with you, my Tim Holtz that's sitting over there has got a nick in it because I did just that. But I love this metal piece, okay? And I better say this because somebody will correct me and they'll be right. There is a metal bar on this um, ruler, but the second feature I'm going to show you is the reason I like this one better for blades, okay? This one, I know this blade's going to make y'all nervous. Let's put it down like that. <laughs> has a grippy kind of strip in the middle. And I want you to see what happens. When I push on this white bar, it pushes down, okay? So what I love about it is I have my paper underneath. Before I go to cut, I put pressure in the middle. And you see how that locks it to my work surface? It's holding it in place. Then I can take my finger blade and see, <laughs> I'm making myself nervous, and I can run right down beside it. And I know two things. One, I'm gonna get a nice clean cut and two, my fingers are out of the way. I can't possibly get my fingers in the way of the cut because I'm pressing over here. Does that make sense? I really love it because you don't need to press it like this. You can't cut. You'll just cut you, right? So keeping your fingers here is very safe. Love this guy. Um, I love that it's metal. I love the size of it. It's not too big. They made one at one time that was really, really big, and it wasn't my favorite. It was. It took up a lot of space, and I didn't find that I used it very much, but I do love this one. Then you also have, obviously, the um, clear side over here, which this one is centimeters, and this side is inches. So that's also interesting. All right, there's that ruler. We're just getting started, y'all. Let me close this up. It's going back into its home. Back into its home. All right, the next ruler you're gonna need is a T-square. I don't find I use this very often, but I'll tell you who does. Folks who love to line their layers up as straight as they can love a T-square. Because when you're lining up layers, let me grab some. Y'all remember this template from the video the other day? I've hung on to it because I think it's super handy and we'll see if it is right here. So let's say I wanna put a layer on this card, okay? If I take my T-square and I lay it over about like this and I put this corner on there, See that? I can use that to my advantage at the bottom for laying this in, and I can see if this is where I need to be. And if it's not, I can pull this down, and then I can move that to it, and it will help me get a straighter edge. Okay, do you see how straight? That looks pretty good. So a lot of people use it to help them get their layer straight. Also, another great place to use it is say you want to stamp in the middle or stamp in a certain spot. You can put this on the side and you know wherever you're going, you can make yourself little um, tick marks and know you're getting a nice straight um, spot. You see how it just makes a perfect kind of L? Everybody loves a T-square, uh, and this is one we found. I've had this one forever. It is so beat up, but this is one we found a while back, and we've been carrying it a long time, and I really like it. So there's that. Now you have a new option. And I'm all about these two, let me show you. So the new option is the Misty T ruler, and I should say rulers, because you get both of these in this pack, okay? They look like this. I love the size of these. That's the big thing for me. I don't like having things that are super huge in my um, craft room. I like things that are small and fit in camera well. You guys probably don't deal with camera. You may not record what you do, but I like that. These guys have that metal edge, so if you wanna cut with them, you can. They have measuring inside and out. What that means is you can measure along the edge, and there's little, I'll go here. There's little um, grids in here that also measure in different ways and for different things, okay? These have been extremely popular. I'm gonna read you what this says. Number one says, size just for paper crafters. This misty ruler ensures perfectly straight lines for measuring or drawing. Number two says, an inset steel rule lets you cut the perfect vertical or horizontal lines without damaging your ruler. And the misty includes two rulers, one in metric and one in imperial, both with multiple increments, allowing you to use the measurements you like best as well as convert tutorials in other style with ease. I like that because here's the deal. Some of us watch European crafters and they use um, metric. And so you could use this if you don't wanna have to translate those measurements. So one thing I think is really cool is say you don't use the metric one very often, but there's something you do a lot or you do all the time that you line up. You could use this one, take like some yellow tape and make marks that are a reference for you. And then you can just use this quickly and not have to do those measures over and over again. Does that make sense? It'll still be in inches, but you could mark those using this inch ruler. You could mark like maybe you want to know four and a quarter for some reason all the time. Just make a mark and you know four and a quarter. But... I think they're really cool to have both of them. They take up no space. Look, I have these sitting in my little container. So both of them are very handy and have been extremely popular. This is the tool I said no one needs, but everyone needs. It is the cutest thing I've ever seen. This is a mini trimmer. Now it doesn't do much. It'll cut up to two and a half inches this way. It cuts up to an inch this way. 
and that's really it. It's about six inches tall, but I love it. I don't know why, and I find myself using it more than I thought I ever would. I use it for like cutting tiny pieces. You'll see in a video, let me see, when will you see this? Yeah, you'll see in a video coming up, I used it to do some quilting with. It's perfect if you like those quilt cards. You'll really like this guy. And I say, if you got, if you have the money to invest and you want to get it, pick up one of these mini trimmers. They are amazing. One cool thing is they use the same blade as your big one, so you don't have to buy a special blade for them when it's time to replace them. You may already have one in your stash. All right, this guy is called the Quick Stick. I have videos on my channel using this as well. Here's what you'd want this for. It does a couple things. One, when you have tiny pieces that you want to glue into a spot and it would be impossible to hold with your hand, this guy has a sticky kind of putty on the end. Do you see that little bead of putty? It has a little sticky bit. That picks something up so you can move it into place and glue it down. The best part is out the back of this guy is this little tool that has a pointy end, a super pointy end, and also this kind of flat end that looks like that. What I like to do, you kind of feel like a surgeon, you're like you're playing operation. You put this into the glue and then you take this guy to hold it down and now you've glued that piece, that piece in place. I love this quick stick. It's the one I have used forever. It has a lot up in here. A lot of people say that they have refill for it. It takes a long time to use all this up. So it, it will be one you'll use for a long time. And at this time, I don't think they have a refill, but if they ever do, we'll start carrying them. There's also that little piece in there you can use for different things. I haven't really figured out the perfect way to use it, but there's also, also that little cut area for you if you need it. So the quick stick. Some more smalls we're gonna do all together is this. You gotta have a good white pen, okay? If you can't afford all the other colors, you gotta have a good white pen. And to be honest with you, you need two nibs, okay? You need one size five, and one size 10, let me get that where you can see those, a five and a 10, and there's other nib sizes and they're fine too. And my favorite of them is the 10. This is the one I use 97% of the time. I use this one sometimes, it's a, it's a pretty skinny little nib on it, but this is the one I use the most often. It is white ink and you just need it. You need it for highlights and eyes, you need it for stitching, you need, there's all kinds of places you need it. You need a good white pen. Now, if you can also afford to add some colored, um, jelly rolls. Jelly rolls are my favorite. If you can find um, colors that you like and you want to add some colors, there's nothing wrong with that because you can use these in lots of different places as well. So, some good pens. For me, this is non-negotiable. This is one you need to pick up. This is the Mono Sand Eraser. This is used for when you put ink somewhere you don't want it. So, let's say you make a card. So I've got this card. We'll use this one. Let's say I made this card and my ink like I, I tripped or something and got ink over here. This eraser has a little bit of sand in it, a little grit. That's why it's called the mono sand eraser. When you use it to erase ink, what it does is it kind of sands the top layer off and it just removes that ink and you cannot see it. Now you can be too heavy handed with it. This guy works better with more passes and less pressure. So when you get it, you'll need to play with it a little bit and get used to the process, but it works very well for getting stray ink off of lots of places. Mono sand eraser, it's great, you'll love it. So this is a non-negotiable for me. This is the Memento dual marker. Now what I love this for is for fussy cutting. You know when you fussy cut something, I'll use this as an example, and you've cut him right to the line, and a lot of times you can see the white around the edge, do you see how you don't see the white on mine? That's because I take this guy, I take the brush end, okay, you can see how that's a brush. I put it on the side of the image I fussy cut and I trace around it. And what that does is it colors in that edge so it looks like I cut perfectly even though I didn't. Also on this end, what I love about this end is it's perfect for when I stamp with Memento and maybe I don't get a perfect image. I can color in those spaces. Maybe one of my letters gets a little skip in it, you know? I can take this and I can draw in where that letter didn't quite close up and you can't tell the difference because it's the same ink as the Memento. But to be honest, I use it with any time I'm using black and it works perfect, so love this pen. These are two things I thought I'd never need. You know I told you about the bone folder. I love this bone folder. I think everybody needs this. It's wonderful, okay? We got these guys because they made them. Honestly, we just wanted to see. Well, I gotta tell you something. We fight over this. We fight to find this on our desk. And I'll show you how, I'm gonna prove that to you, okay? Here's how much we fight over it. This one's mine. 
This one's Shannon. Do you know why it says table? Because she typically works on the table in the back of the room. And that means don't take this from the table so that we both have one. So this one's mine. This one's hers. This one is fantastic for creasing your cards. Let me show you. So once you've scored them and it's time to crease, you run this down and it is so wonderful for that. And you can use this edge. And I don't know why we love it so much. I'm just going to be honest with you, but go ahead and get one and see if you don't agree. There's something about the way this feels in the hand and about the process, and we use it a lot more places than we thought we would. It's really good for curling paper, too. Watch this. So let's say you want to curl a strip of paper. This is a super thick piece that I picked for myself. You can take this and put it down on the table and then pull the paper, and look. See how it curls it so good? Just hold your little bone folder down and use it like that, and I love it because it's so smooth, the paper runs through real easy. So there's another way to use it. Now, this guy, we really thought we wouldn't use it we don't use it as much as I thought, even as I thought we would. I thought we'd pick it up more often, but it is good for scoring. It's a good little scoring tool. If you want to use it on your um, score, on your scoreboards, it's good for that. I tend to forget about it, but it is a good little tool. And so if you want to pick up the pencil, that's available. And also this is the Ergo Bone Folder. I cannot forget tweezers, and you'll probably hear me call them twizers every now and then, and that is kind of a joke between me and Vince, but these are reverse tweezers. Now, what's cool about these is they open when you squeeze them, and they close when you release the squeeze. Do you see that? The reason that's cool is because when you're wanting to place something down and you're using your tweezers, you get it in place, it kind of holds it like a second hand, then you release it, right? And I really like these for tying baker's twine bows. You can pull the baker's twine, use this to hold your knot in place while you tie the bow. These are fantastic because you can let go of them because you don't have to hold them. I love them. Reverse tweezers. It's also another kind of non-negotiable. Let's go back to stamping a bit. I want to talk to you about this. You won't see me use this in camera probably ever. And one of the reasons is it's it's a step up. When we talk advanced, this is a step up to me from my squeaky clean that I use. I like to clean my stamps with my squeaky clean on a daily basis. Anytime we're using stamps, this is what we like to use to clean it. But if I ever have a stubborn spot or a stubborn stamp or a really old stamp that won't clean, this is some sort of cleaning fluid that gets just about everything off. I've even used it in other things besides just stamps. But this one says, this essential Nouveau stamp cleaning solution cleans a variety of inks, including pigment, hybrid, and dye-based inks. This all-purpose cleaner is ideal for both rubber and clear stamps. The solution comes in an easy-to-spray bottle um, for thorough, let's see, Spray bottle for a thorough clean of all grooves and details in deeply etched stamps, making it ideal to use with the Nouveau scrub pad, which I told you about too, which I hope to have this back in store soon, but you can use these two together. I don't suggest it. I suggest you use this with your scrub pad because to me, this has kind of an oil base to it. And that's one reason I like to use it when as like the advanced cleaner. When something just won't clean, we'll go to this one. That's why you really don't see it in camera because I'm rarely like advanced cleaning in camera. But we keep a bottle of this at our sink and we use it in the craft room. It's really good stuff. It's strong. I ain't going, I'm, I want you to know this. It's strong. It's got an odor. Remember that when you get it. So you might just want to kind of do a little bit at a time to get used to it. All right, another non-negotiable, these guys. Now, there's a hundred million different colors of Distress Ink. There really are. There's a hundred million different, there's not a hundred million. There's a lot of colors of Distress Ink. There's a lot of colors of Distress Oxide Ink. And I have carried them and used them and still have them in my stash and sometimes I use them. But I find for me, if I have these two, I'm pretty good for the kind of crafting I do. If you're wanting to do ink blending and have all the colors to do the rainbow backgrounds and the gradient backgrounds, add to your collection, but you won't go wrong with Distress Ink, okay? And you won't go wrong with Distress Oxide. For me, I like to keep Vintage Photo and Walnut Stain on my desk with this handy. Look how worn this is. It works just fine. I'll replace it when it stops working, okay? I keep, you can see where I sit it. I keep this sitting here. I keep these guys stacked up right to the side of my desk because what I use these for is inking edges. Um, so, for example, if I wanted to ink the edge of this card, I would tap it in the ink. I really don't want to put ink on here, but I'll show you. I would tap it in my ink, and then I would run around the edge like this, and I could get that distressed edge, and that's why you love this. I don't use it on every card. Some cards don't need this. Some need to stay crisp and clean, but some need that vintage kind of distressed look, and that's what I use these for. I keep them right. I'm serious. I go like this. They are just out of camera. They stay right there, so I can reach them all the time. Let's talk bits and bobs. That's what I'm going to call this. 
as you are building your stash and advancing what you're doing and what you have in your stash, you'll want to add this kind of stuff. The first thing I would love to see you add is Baker's Twine. I feel like Baker's Twine can be used everywhere and for every kind of thing. And I have every color I can get my hands on because I just think Baker's Twine is so useful for all crafts, paper and otherwise. The other thing I think is ribbon. Get yourself a collection of ribbon. It's not something you'll use every day, but when you need it, it's good to have it. And for card making, it's good to do a thinner one. This is a 5-8. No, this is a 3-8. And this one is a 5-8. We even carry a 7-8 and some bigger, but it's good to have these sizes for card making and even folios and albums. These aren't really good if you want to make a ribbon closure or a bow or something like that. Start yourself a stash of ribbon. Now, these guys, first off, they're beautiful. Nouveau doesn't do bad packaging. It just doesn't happen. They don't know how to do it. Look how beautiful. <laughs> These guys are things you'll want to start to collect. Now, y'all know I don't do glitter, right? I'm not a fan of glitter, but I like confetti because it's bigger, and if I do have a spill, it's much easier to clean up, and even this I use sparingly, but I love their little confetti packs, okay, and I love all of their jewel drops, dream drops, crystal drops, vintage drops, all the drops, okay, they're really good to collect as well. And it doesn't have to be the Nouveau brand, but I'm gonna be honest, I've used a lot over the years and these are my favorite and they look beautiful on my shelf. Look how gorgeous those pa the packaging is. So any kind of drop, you'll wanna keep that in your stash and let's step that up one time as well. You're also gonna want some glossy accents. Now what this does is it allows you to put a shine on things that don't have one. Let's say I wanted to shine up the um, screen here on my robot. I can take this product and I can squirt it straight out. We've got a T-pin in there keeping it from um, drying out, but I can squirt it straight out and it has like a, um, um, what's it called? It does a bubble effect. It kind of domes up and you can cover this whole thing in the clear so I'll still be able to see through it. But then when you look at my card and I do it like this, you'll be able to see the shimmer on the screen if I wanted to put it there. This you can use in lots of places for everything, and some people use it as an adhesive. I've never done that. It's a little firm for me to be an adhesive. It gets a little stiff, but some people do use it as adhesive, so that's another one to add to your stash. Nuvo makes one called Crystal Accents. <laughs> I think so. So we have the Nuvo one and we also have the Ranger version. So they're both really good. As I was putting things away, I realized I did not give bling its day. This is something you should collect as well. Now what I do is I have a little tray, a little black tray, and I throw my bling in it. I just keep it all together. And then as I go, hmm, this item needs a little shine. I pull out that little tray and I dig through and see what I wanna use. So I have all different kinds. Honestly, bling is something that you will never have too much of. I know you might feel like you do, and you've probably been collecting a long time, but you can always use it on many different projects, so it's good to have this to give that extra little step um, to your projects. These are all um, adhesive back. They come with adhesive, but you can use the ones that don't. You just have to use your own adhesive for them, but I love having bling at my disposal for when I just need that instant sparkle. Here's a fun one to stick in for y'all. I'm going to put it in here because I think it's important. I think if you're going to start stamping, it's not a bad idea to get into a stamp club. And I, I have a stamp club and I'm going to mention it, but there's other ones out there. And the reason I want to say that is what I love about a stamp club, I'll tell you where it came from. When I started quilting, I told y'all a lot of this is because what I learned from quilting, I searched out a good subscription service and I found one that every month I get tools I've never had before and it's building my stash. And that's the same thing with a good stamp club. Now you would have just seen this one revealed earlier today. That's why I'm using it. But we have two clubs you can choose from. We have our original club, which is always things that everyone can use. It's not, it's never specific to a holiday or specific to anything like that. We have those that everyone can use. And then we have a second club that is our scripture club. And it is specific to scripture and Christian holidays. So that, if you choose that one, you need to know that that will be scripture and Christian holidays. But here's what I love about my club. And you might not like my club. You can use a different one, but here's what I love. These stamp sets retail in my store for $12.99, and I have done everything I can to keep that price that low. I feel like if you look around, you'll see that most people aren't at that price range. We have done everything we can to stay at that low price. Well, to make it even better, when you become a stamp club member, this price goes down to $11.99, and that includes your shipping. So every month, if you signed up for this one, on the 6th of the month, you get a new 
never before seen stamp set for $11.99 mailed to your door. Now the only time that changes is if you're international, that price is $13.49. And we reveal the new stamp set on the 6th of the month at 3 p.m. And if you sign up for the Scripture Club, we reveal it on the 21st of the month at 3 p.m. And it's the same price, $11.99 and $13.49. But to step it up even better, as a club member, you get a coupon code to use in our store for 15% off most items every day. So you don't have to wait for a sale. But even better than that, you're building a cute stamp collection, okay? There are literally people who've been in my stamp club since we started. It blows my mind, but I, I really think we do such a good job of bringing a different stamp set every time. Like we're not repeating what we've done before. We try very hard to do that, to really build your collection so you can have something new and fresh all the time. And I think that's a cool thing to add as an advanced thing. Again, you don't have to do mine. I just wanted to tell you about mine because I love every month getting my um, quilt subscription because I get a new tool or a new thing to use and I think the club is the same way. So consider getting into a stamp club. It will help you build your supplies over the year. Or I don't know, you can do this for more than a year. Like I said, people do it all the time. I know I'm out of order because I showed you that embossing machine earlier, but I want to talk to you about dies. So the thing I love about dies is that you can get you can use them over and over and over again. It's not something, it's kind of like a stamp. I buy one stamp set and I can use it forever, right? It's the same thing with a die. I love that about them. It's not an image you're purchasing or anything like that. It's something you have all the time. Well, the only thing I'm very picky about with my dies is I like to make sure I purchase dies that work like this. They're something I can use all the time for any application and they're not very specific. Now, I have some dies that are super specific and I may start bringing some more of those in because I've collected a lot of these. But when you get started, collect nesting dies. Collect things like this that you know you can use all the time. Circles, squares, ovals, um, tags, um, ornament shapes, you know, things you can use all the time. Try to collect those, and in the long run, you can avoid some of those very specific dies that build only one thing. These, you'll use a lot more than that, and it's worth your money at first. So I wanted to mention dies as well. Okay, this is the last thing I'm going to talk about. It doesn't mean it's the last thing you can add, but this is the last thing I'm going to mention today. Alcohol markers, color pencils, um, crayons, whatever it is you want to color with, you need to go ahead and find that, but you need to spend some time first. Don't run out and buy color pencils. Don't run out and buy alcohol markers. Watch some videos and see which one speaks to you because they're very different in their process and they're very different in the supplies you wanna to buy to go with them. The paper you wanna use for alcohol marker is different, mostly, than the paper you wanna use for color pencils. Now, we love this Prisma set. It's a student set. It's 24 pencils. It's affordable, and it gets me what I need. So I don't have one of those big old, um, I do have a big Prisma color set, but it's because I've had it for years, but I don't carry them in my store. We just carry this because it's a good set to get you going in card making. As far as alcohol markers, I love these guys. They come in these containers. They come in this big size and a smaller size if you want to just kind of dip your toe I love them. They're dual nibbed. You have the bullet nib and the um, chisel point. So they're really good options to add to your stash. You just need to do the research before you do it. But I do feel like if you want to be an advanced stamper, you are going to want to color some images from time to time. Okay, guys, I'm looking at my counter to make sure I showed you everything. And I think I did. Again, I could go on and on. I could walk around my room and just pick up, oh, you need this and oh, you need that. But I feel like you need some time to process. Look at these items we talked about today. Start picking some up. Start playing with them. You know, see what's for you and what's not for you. And take your time. You don't have to have everything all at once. Let's say you want to get into alcohol markers. Just start there. Don't worry about all of this in the meantime, okay? I hope this has cleared up or given you some ideas for things to add to your stash. Thank you for being here throughout this series. I still have one or two more videos coming, but you guys have really, really been supportive from, of me on this series, and I cannot tell you how much that means to me. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss my next video. And... If you don't mind, hit that little thumbs up button. It just lets YouTube know that I'm doing a good job and I appreciate that. Thank you guys so much. Till next time. Bye now.